I'm Tom Spencer, and you're watching Underkill TV. Welcome to Underkill TV. I'm joined by the one and only Mr. Tom Spencer. Tom, how are you doing? It's good to see you. Hello, nice to see you. <laughs> uh, and you're currently out on tour with the men they couldn't hang. Yep, we're on day 19 of um, uh, 19 dates with Stiff Little Fingers. Yeah, supporting them. How did, how did it come about then that you? Uh, they asked you us. They, they, um, they, they fact, I think Jake himself asked because he likes the band and. Um, I think you know certain level bands. We, we did the same with the Wonder stuff last year, mm -hmm. doing a certain level tours. It's you know we kind of pep up the ticket sales a bit by having, this, you know, the term special guests rather than support. Yeah, yeah. But we're the support band, <laughs> a special, special support band. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, how's it gone down then so far? Because you're quite a sort of different band from Stiff Little Fingers, but yet you you're a good crossover band in the yeah. punk I mean, genre. People like people like the same two bands. They're both sincere. There's an element of politics in the music, and there's and even though you know the men they could name, you could call them folk, that horrible folk word. But the truth is, they're a rock and roll band. They, yeah, you know, yeah. they're more poses than folk. Yeah, yeah, but they write songs about the plight of the working British man. Yeah. And to a degree, Stiff Little Fingers, well, their earlier stuff especially was all about that yeah of course. so um that's what ties it in plus i think if you have another punk band before them it can cancel it out a bit you know but because it's different and a bit acoustically based it, it works well and some of the gigs like um glasgow barrowlands on paddy's night and uh the, the forum in london it's been mental it's felt like it's felt like we were headlining with really? the reaction and then they come on and it's the double reaction so it's <laughs> it's proved it's a good night yeah. it works and we've had eddie tempo supporting as well yeah. coming yeah. on before us and we've got to know him and um, him really well because you know he's he's travelling by himself, so we kind of end up in a gang with him, <laughs> and he's ended up doing swords of a thousand men with us at the end of our set a couple of times, which is fun. How long do you actually get then on a on a, as a special guest to SLF? It varies um, from forty to uh, it's a, the shortest we had to do once was half an hour because it's a really early show, but generally it's fifty minutes, so yeah. that's just about enough. I mean, the men they can hang normally play an hour and a half, mm -hmm. so it's kind of weird. We have to really cut the set down, but it's it's right for the so it's a slot, you know. And how do the guys yourself and all include? How do you pick a set for something half an hour from the back catalogue that you guys have got? It's tricky. It's tricky. <laughs> we had a big thing. We thought of doing a different set every night, but in the end, because tour, it's easier just to get one good set. And we, there's a few floating songs we do. They've got one long song called "The Greenfields of France," which is their biggest hit. Yeah, and yeah, um, of course, yeah. so by putting that in the set means you would have to drop two others. Yeah. But like we we did it at Glasgow Barrowlands, and it was so went down so well. We've started putting that in now. So it's sort of, sort of a ten song set, but yeah. it, it works. Cool. Excellent stuff. And um, what's the plans for the men they couldn't hang? Uh, got, is it going to be a new album or anything? Because it's the anniversary coming yeah, up soon. They've got. They they got. Um, they're doing a new album anyway. Because five years since the last one, Devil on the Wind. Um, but it's their thirtieth anniversary next yeah. year. So they're doing both next year, but not not together because it's a waste. If you you know the album and that can be a separate thing. But the thirtieth anniversary is going to be celebrated with this. Um, a pledge campaign, right, which yeah. they're going to do. Yeah. Uh, I haven't got the site now, but it's via their normal site, thtm. Yeah. Thtm. Dot net. Just go to that site right there. Ah, right, that's clever technology. <laughs> technology. I can't see it. I can't see it. No, but that that'll have the details, and yeah. with them, we do that. And they, 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 you know, there's a meeting going on now, right, as we speak, about how they're going to do that and how they're going to tie in the new album. Because Paul Simmons has already written the new album. But there's going to be some element of greatest hitsness to do with the 30th anniversary right, too. Yeah. Perhaps re-recording their original songs, but with the new lineup now, yeah. which would be great for me to play on them. Yeah, yeah. Um, plus, some of these songs they recorded when they were 20 years old. Um, now to do the, they, they've developed over 20 years of playing live. Wow. You know? And I was talking to Paul Simmons the other day. I mean, Shirt of Blue, one of their other well-known songs about the, the two kids from school who meet on the picket line, yeah. of writing a song about them meeting again in the retirement home or down the pub, and <laughs> sort of continuing the story, which would be nice. So, yeah. so trying to, to use the fact because not many bands survive for thirty years. No, absolutely no. not. Yeah. And like you said, the pledge campaign. It seems to be a road that a lot of the musicians are going down. Do you think it's it's a good idea? I mean, as you say, like yourself, you know, Ginger Wildout's yeah. just done it, and uh, I think the Union, which ex Thunder members, another yeah. big name band. Not too People are doing it. I, I, I was on. I, I played on the ginger one, the, the yeah. mutation thing. Um, now I think it's like anything. I think too many people will do it soon. I think uh, it's like any of all these you know, bands make it through MySpace, then suddenly everyone's doing it, then suddenly it saturates. And I think too many people will do pledge soon. 
So if the men they couldn't hang, couldn't hang are going to do it, they've got to be fast. Yeah. But they're unique. They've got a 30-year following. Yeah. So if ever there was a band that Pledge is suited to, and bear in mind they're following are now most of them in their 40s, yeah. therefore they've got cash to do these kind of higher pledges. And, and also the other thing that's great about Pledge is it gets, it's, it's a modern way of making people feel involved in the band Absolutely, again. Absolutely, yeah. You know, in a digital age, it yeah. suddenly makes them really feel part of it and part of the creative process. And um, I think, it, I mean, I suggested it to the men because I know I worked with Rich Jones who was yeah. actively involved in managing Ginger's One and all that yeah. um, and help Eureka Machine do it. Of course, yeah, um, another band has done it. Yeah, so I think, um, I think it would be great, and the, but they've got to get on with it. Yeah. And so they start it now, then the, both albums will come out next year and there'll be tours throughout the year to do it. I mean, like you said, any diehard sort of fan, you have like a studio update and things like that and, you know, yeah. sites you can log on to, which is a really good thing. You know, I mean... Like with with Ginger, you know, he's got such like a, a loyal fan base, a bit like the men they couldn't hang, you know, people that can keep up to date on sort of a daily basis what's yeah, happening with the band. It's run well. In fact, I think Rich Jones is going to manage their one for them because he right. knows how to do it. And, yeah. and uh, you've got to have one person running it to make sure it's, it's constant and their updates and that if you do pledge it, you, you really are involved and you get things that no one else does, whether it's demos of the new album or whether it's coming around the living room to play a gig. All sorts yeah, of bands yeah. have all these different yeah. ideas and they, they, you can be really creative yeah, with it. Yeah, you can get your yeah. name in the credit notes and everything. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Or be in the video yeah. or be at the... Uh, they're playing part of the... We've, booked, we've already booked it actually for next Easter. Shepherd's Bridge Empire is going to be the, the launch of the whole thing. Right. Some, yeah. Somewhere around Easter. But, for instance, there's going to be guest list for that tied into some of the pledges too. Oh, right, that's yeah. a good idea, yeah. Yeah, so they're the, the party, really. <laughs> and what's, what's, uh, what's the plans with you then, uh, the rest of the year? Because, I mean, like you said, you're doing a bit with Gin, you've done a bit with Ginger, you, yeah. you do the yo-yos when you can, you, you, you're pretty much a very bu busy session musician. Band slag. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I just, it's keeping busy, isn't it? I mean, I do my stained glass as well. Yeah. So after this, I go back and do a bit of glass work. And then I've got, um, the loyalties are launching our album in Berlin. In two weeks, the Lord is nice to write. No, I mean, <laughs> so I wonder you forget it. I mean, uh, and we because that album came out a month ago till the yeah. death of rock and roll. Yeah, and um, if anybody wants to get that, what's the site they can go on to get that, Tom? Um, I, we have got loyalties.com, I think. Yeah, and it's certainly loyalty, loyalties Facebook, another one of these. Yeah, just go right? to here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and there is a band camp. We did that via a site called Bandcamp. So there's a site by that, but it all links up to the Facebook and to the to the site, um, and that is that comes with a Who Done It book. All oh, right, yeah. So there's a kind of which was written by me and Gaz from Uber Rock. Yeah. And, and it it's a Who Done It on a tour bus. Which, funny enough, I started writing whilst on tour with Tyler for the Dogs to More, yet another band I slagged with. <laughs> but I sat on a tour bus and I was actually reading a Who Done It, and and Agatha Christie always said you should only ever have twelve characters in a book. And I sat there looking at these twelve stinking bunks, thinking if someone was dead in one of them, you wouldn't know for days, and it's only sound check if to get them out and um i just thought it was a good scenario for who done it <laughs> and a bit of irony to do with the death of rock and roll and the the, the I've, I've said it in 2000 which is the, you know when the yo-yos last toured actually yeah. and at that time the impending thing of downloads and what's going to happen and the fear of the end of rock and roll yeah, and yeah. so it's kind of set in that time and hope I'm, I'm not an author but i think it's all right and it's um it certainly makes the album have a little niche interest and that comes with the new album then yeah you yeah. can you can buy it as a hard copy or you can download the book and just get the album yeah. we've done it so it's available as a simple way they, they don't have to go with each other they no, can no. they both stand on their own thing but it's just an idea and how would how would you describe the new loyalties record to the uh, so much for soho because i mean that was a fantastic debut record how would you describe it compared to that well, i think it's it's slightly more mature yeah. just but that's not intentional that's just because it's been four or five years since we did it and yeah. um, we brought in another guitarist as well rich rags um I, why I think it's just because he's a great mate of ours and we just thought it'd be great we've got three guitars now it doesn't have to make a wall of noise and his influence definitely helped I mean I was still kind of majority writer of it but we the, the best songs on the album are the, the co-writes between me him and Rich Jones definitely are the, the one my favourites or the ones that are being picked out in reviews yeah, yeah. so he's definitely had a major input um, so I guess I don't know, I guess he's added, not, it's not, I don't know, it's not, not just maturity, he's added another element to it, a different style, another, another little touch yeah, of it. Yeah. So maybe slightly less punky, but it's still rock and roll and it's still punky, hopefully. <laughs> it's got the punk. We went to Berlin to record it because... Um, is it the Riches now? Is he over there? Where is he? No, he's not there now. No, he was there recently on yeah. tour, but he's, you know, Rich is always talking about moving to Berlin. Yeah, that's why. Right. Every time we go there, I mean, yeah. we always have a fantastic time there, which is why I said to the band, rather than go to a studio in London, let's all go to Berlin for a week and make the album of course could we live together and stayed in a room and all that then it does come across yeah, like course, a band yeah, on tour yeah, and yeah. that worked then we brought it back to England and then did the overdubs here but I think that feel worked yeah. thus we're going back there to launch it because it seemed fitting and it's a good excuse to go to Berlin 
<laughs> we do a gig, just do a one-off gig there, and it'd be great. Yeah, awesome stuff. And obviously, you mentioned you touched the subject of your glass tattoo business. Can you tell uh, the viewers on the Kill TV w what that entails? I mean, anyone who doesn't know. Yeah, um, it's uh, I make stained glass windows based on tattoo art. Well, it's inspired by it. Now it's kind of developed. You know, I started off going in the tattoo world, and now I do sell work in galleries. I get commissions, and it's just something that I've ended up accidentally kind of doing. And it's nice. It's kind of a mixture of all the things I've done because I, I did a tattoo apprenticeship at one point, and. Uh, it wasn't for me, but it's, it seems like this is finally an amalgamation of everything I've done, yeah. including going to college after school doing graphics, which is something I've never pursued as a career, but that does come into it because I'm painting hand yeah. lettering and things. and So it's kind of nice, and it was a, an accidental business I've created. And some of the art is absolutely phenomenal on there. Um, so if anybody wants to check that out, what is the website? Tattooglass.com Which is, again, just for there. Yeah, for there. that's right. <laughs> that's the power of technology. Yeah. Excellent stuff. Okay, as well, I was going to ask Tom, uh, you're also a frontman of another another really good band that people don't know about, uh, band Joey Ramone. Yeah. How, how did that come about, and uh, can you tell the viewers a bit about it? It was uh, a silly idea, really. It was, uh, when it was a rich, everyone I knew in the Lorties was touring with other bands, and I was kind of sulking, because I didn't have a gig in the book, and I've all, I kind of had this idea. Cause I, with all those bands, you didn't have a gig in yeah. the book? Yeah, <laughs> not in the book, but it was a bit, was, I can't remember, I was sulking anyway. And I get a nickname, Banjo Ramon, with the men they couldn't name because I played a banjo quite low or lower than any <laughs> ones. And I just thought it was a great name for a band. And so I spoke to Kurt from The Grit, and at the time, and it was, uh, what's his name? Charlie from The Grit as well. And we just started rehearsing, and then we made a demo, and it sort of became a band last year. And it's great. I mean, it's hard work to keep together. It's definitely, it, it's great. Every, every time we play, everyone loves it. You yeah. know, punk covers done in a hillbilly kind of mental way, but yeah. with the energy of The Grit, you know, that whole thing. Yeah, yeah they've got the double bass and yeah. everything. And, and so, yeah. so it wasn't like, you know, for instance, you look at AC Dixie, uh, who do these rock covers, but done perfectly with musical genius kind of thing. We're not trying to take them on. We're much more like the yeah, sweat and the energy of a punk band yeah. playing those familiar songs. Well, the videos that's on YouTube, I mean, you've done Scoop Bop, and uh, it's um, it's very much the same sort of tempo as the Ramones would do it, and it's exactly... Yeah, yeah. It, gets, it gets mad and yeah. frenetic, and then you've got Kurt climbing up his bass and everything going <laughs> mad. It's got the potential to be great. I think I, uh, I've let it go since last year because I've join the men of Kunang and that's going to be busy but also because I was managing it and I never wanted to manage it I wanted to kind of get this idea and get some agency to come in and to say well that's a good idea I can market that and do it now that might still happen the site's up there and um, uh, again Facebook Banjo Ramon but if someone takes it on I'll put the line up together and do it but yeah. the, the whole thing of chasing gigs and doing all that stuff I can't be asked. that's not my that's not what I'm into music for and also uh, the yo-yos. Is there any chance of another yo-yos gig, Tom? Funny enough, funny enough there is one in the summer. Um, Chris, Danny's brother, phoned up and said, you're up for doing a one-off yo-yos gig. We did, no, this, this isn't a reforming thing. It's just a one-off gig at the Camden Festival, Camden Rock Festival that Chris is doing yep. amongst his other promotions. Good lineup. It's got Therapy, Turbo Wolf, all sorts of... I, I can't remember. There's lots, there's lots more bands. Yeah, there's about yeah. 30, 40 yeah, bands, lot, there, yeah. I, I don't even know where it... I mean, it's at Camden, obviously, but I don't know if it's one of those indoor festivals or it's outdoors. I haven't even looked into it. But we're getting it together. Uh, Rich can't do it. He's away on tour with Ginger. Neil Phillips, who did download last year with us, is busy with his own stuff. Uh, and so we're going to... I said to Chris, only if you play guitar. So Chris, I think, is going to play half the set and Jeff Stretfield from the Wild Arts is going to do the other half. So, so that, that is something for a Yo-Yo's fan to definitely yeah, come along and see the so. McCormack brothers together yeah, and, that, that and a Wild Art in the Yo-Yo's. Yeah, I think it would be good. I think it would be great. And the, the Loyalty's drummer, Simon, who did the, the, the Yo-Yo's gigs last year, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. man, that, that boy's come on so much in the last couple of years. We got him first of all in the Loyalty's and, uh, you know, he was drumming someone else's drumming because the first album he wasn't on. We thought he's all right. And then when he's just played on this new album and now live, everyone, we come out away from gigs, everyone says, where'd you get that drummer? Where'd you get that drummer? So he really has, and he nailed the Yo-Yo stuff. Because he used to come to Yo-Yo's gigs as a kid. Really? And it was very memorable because he was always down the front. He had a sister and him and his twin brother, little blonde kids, about 13. They were always at the front with these big smiles. And all the time he was staring at Blads, our drummer. Never. And so he's got this kind of weird, he's kind of, doesn't copy him. He's just got, he's kind of, he does, his posture and that. So it's the perfect replacement. Yeah. Blood's, Blood's still in KMFDM, is it? Yeah, I, I mean, Blood, I just followed like anyone else, just on Facebook, I just yeah. see what he's up to. He lives in Miami, and yeah. uh, I saw something that they were finishing a tour recently. Yeah. He comes over every now and again. I think he's doing well. Yeah. yeah. Excellent yeah. stuff. And what was the other band you were going to tell us about, Tom? Oh, yeah, well, just my family band that I've always done, Fast Lane Rugulator. This yeah. is a mission. Yeah. But why it's relevant is um, 
this year, we after my dad died in, ten years ago now, we we kind of obliged a couple of festival gigs, formed a band, me and my brothers, some of my dad's musicians and some of mine, and we just do a couple of gigs a year, you know, to keep his music alive. But this year he had a an album he made just before he died, and we kind of never got round to releasing it. There were a few contractual problems. Then we were doing this, and then it got left, and suddenly, you know, because it's ten years, time flies. And so we released it this February. We kind of got the masters back, got the, and we got it, got it finished. We did a launch gig, and it was a really powerful night. You know, getting my dad's music. Me and my brothers sung with my dad's original musicians doing wow. it. Very powerful. And then lots of my dad's old musicians did individual songs. Then Fast Lane Moogle later finished the night because we've kind of become this pub rock monster sounding yeah, band. Yeah. And so it was. It's a great night and that's now that's called blues man and it's out on irregular records his his last album so it's something else to mention because um, yeah. without without him around to promote it you know the occasional fast lane rugulator gig will but it, it's just, it was our duty to get it out we kind of felt like we'd been haunted till we got it out and now we can sleep easy but it's there yeah. and that's many much of the influences of what you've you play today sort of thing uh, yeah more linked to men they couldn't hang than to my rock world right. you know I used to tour with my dad yeah. when his life and, and it's again it's got that well, I hate the word folk you know but in his circuit there's a definite folk influence in those festivals you know what does folk mean it means traditionally English based ly you know lyric based sincerity yeah. doesn't it but also to me means lentils and long hair and bollocks you know it's like <laughs> but I, I, that's the bit I don't like about yeah. it you know I went did a gig with, with Ralph McTell and my dad and backstage there was all this gig Guinness, and there was all these boxes of carob bars and all this healthy shit and I, we came off stage and I was going to hide some Guinness for me and all the, the vegan food had gone and all the Guinness was there it's fantastic so <laughs> me, me and my dad just got trashed all right. folkies fuck them <laughs> you heard it from Tom first <laughs> well Tom thank you very 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 much for your time it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you and uh, we look forward to seeing the men they couldn't hang after uh, and you should see and having a drink yeah Cheers. Once again, this is Underkill TV with the one and only Tom Spencer signing out. Thanks a lot, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Excellent.